that he was sort of worried about where the secondary would be, but then Ambry came along. Ambry's come along, Vincent Gray's come along, Jalen Kelly Powell's come along, you know, uh, and, and you can't count on Jamon Green. So we, we've got some, the guys have been working extremely hard, been doing really well, and then, you know, we've got DJ coming this summer, so it'll be interesting. What's different about Vincent this year from a, a oh, He's just player. comfortable. He's very comfortable. He's a very naturally talented, gifted guy. So he knows the system now, and now he's just going out there and playing. He's not thinking. It's a it's really beautiful thing. Is the offense any, go ahead. even more of a challenge for you guys? Yeah, the, yeah, it's great for us, really. The RPO deal, we, we love it. You know, you just got to be very disciplined in the back end. The linebackers got to be disciplined. And uh, I think it's, it's going to help us tremendously moving forward, for sure. Has anything surprised you about the group so far? Uh, well, I guess you could say I'm pleasantly happy that, that Vincent has come along, that, that uh, Jalen Kelly Powell has come along, and that... Uh, you know, Ambry is just, the sky's the limit with that guy. He's really had a great spring. So happy for those guys and certainly happy for us as a defense that they're, that they're playing well. Where has Ambry made the most improvement from this time last year? Well, I think in his technique, in his patience at the line of scrimmage, and the fact that he knows that he has an opportunity to start, he's really embraced that role and he is, and he's becoming a leader. He's becoming a leader in our room. Uh, he's been great all, all around. Does it sometimes hold someone back when they know that you know it's going to be tough to break into that group play last year? Ambry clearly wasn't going to be a, a starter. But. Right. Right. Well, now, now I see that's the great thing about it. They, they see that there's light. Mm -hmm. They see that there's an opportunity. They see that there's competition for the other spots that are open. So, I think it's helped everybody along the way get better. Definitely. A little more understanding about Levert this spring than you were last year. Oh, week. yeah. Shoot, man. He's great. He's <laughs> been awesome. He has been excellent in the classroom, a real leader in there for us. You know, he's on the board quite a bit. He's vocal when guys aren't doing the right things in the room. So, yeah, he's he's locked in, ready to go. Is Hawkins still the guy at nickel, or and how are you handling Yeah, B. Between? Hawks there. Nick, yeah, he'll just drop right down in there, which is fine because he's, he's handled it very well. He has added great value to our, our back end. He's, he's made us better. He's, he's, he's having a great spring, Brad, Brad Hawkins. Mike, is uh, Jalen Kelly Powell, is he a corner now? Or you yeah, he's a corner. corner. He's a corner and working in nickel, too, okay, him and Brad, corner. yeah. And uh, he's really slowed things down in his mind, and he's having a great spring. He's, uh, he's really competing. He's making great plays on the football and uh, enjoy having him in the room, for sure. I think you mentioned Vincent Gray during bowl prep. When did you first start seeing strides from him last year? Well, I really didn't, to be very honest. Um, you just watch him move. Physically, he, he has, he's a very gifted guy. And you just watch his movements, you're like, wow. And now he's putting it all together with his play. It's pretty impressive. I mean, I mean he's the sky's the limit for that kid. You didn't mention uh, Miles Sims. What's he got to do to get in there? Yeah, Miles, he's, he's just got to be more consistent. You know, he put together a couple of nice practices, and uh, and he just kind of, you know, he just, just got to stay and get better every day. He's got the skill set. He has it. He's just got to get consistent. What's been your early impressions of Jalen Perry? Jalen, young. You know, and I keep telling myself, hitting myself on the head, because I don't want to, he should be at the prom. You know, and he's here with us now, and he's, he's gifted. He's got the skill set, but he is he's still in high school. And, and you know, he, he's got a little ways to go catching up and understanding the speed of the game, the technique that, that, that we use. You know, he's a gifted athlete in high school. You, know, you can just go out and you can cover a guy most of the time. And uh, here it's not that way. And he's just got to learn our way of, of – of man on man. What's the advantage of having, of having a guy like that enroll early instead of coming in? The fall? Well, he's getting all this under his belt now. So he'll walk in in the fall. Um, he, he won't have to go through the bridge process of school. And, you know, hopefully with, with his mind, he's a very bright kid, he'll retain all this and just be able to walk in and have that under his belt and feel very comfortable, feel, feel a little more comfortable 
than he did walking in here raw, you know, green as hell. Now at least he's got this the system under his belt and, he'll, and, and know what he's getting into in the fall. What's that conversation like when a guy's deciding whether to enroll early or start in the fall? Well, you know, being a father of two, two Division One players, a father doesn't want their father and mother don't want them to go. But as a coach, it's, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a valuable thing because, you know, it's, it's, they walk into things. They're, just, they're not running into it. So they're walking into school. They're walking into weightlifting, but winter conditioning. And then they're going to get into spring ball. So it's not piled on them all at once. So it's a nice progression. Whereas when you, these guys are coming in the, in the fall, you know, it's, it's difficult. School's right out of the gate, and, that, and now you're trying to compete for a job, and it's not an easy task. So that, that would be the conversation. And I get it as a parent, and I get it as a, as a coach. Amber says he's the fastest guy on the team, maybe the fastest. He thinks he's case. the fastest guy in the NCAA. Yes, he does. I was yeah. getting to that, yeah. I mean, he's fast. He is fast. <laughs> He's but one fast. of the guys said early on in spring said sometimes the speed can be a problem in man. In man well, it, it can be. If, if, he, if he doesn't know how to control it, mm -hmm. it absolutely can be because, you know, these our guys are taught to stay below a lot of the routes. And, you know, and, and once the route gets vertical, you don't want to sneak in the sixth gear right away. And that could be a problem because then you're above it and then you get all the underneath routes and that's where you get in trouble. So, yeah, that could be a problem. But... For him, it's not because he understands it. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful. Has like, he kind of learned some of more like control and that sort of stuff this spring? I think Ambry started coming on at the end of last year. I really do. Uh, probably middle, middle to the end of last year, he started figuring it out, started figuring out his body, started figuring out what he can and can't do, and uh, started really understanding our technique. So that was helpful for him. I think last year you had a solid cup of three with LeVert, David, and uh, Brandon Watson. Do you feel like you have that this year? Absolutely. I, I think LeVert, um, Vincent Gray, and Ambry, I think very solid. And then you add to the mix JKP, Jalen Kelly Powell. Yeah, you feel pretty good about things. You really do. I'm sorry. Has it been business as usual in terms of you know scheme, what you're teaching, everything else? Are you guys doing anything tweaked this year? No, it's, it's business as usual for sure. Josh Gaddis play, played defensive back in college, and said that that's helped shape how he, you know, constructs an offense and and knows how to attack sure. defense. Do you see that in the way this offense is running? Yeah, well, RPOs are meant to mm -hmm. do that. You know, they put you in a run-pass conflict, and then if you're not disciplined, like we talked about earlier, that absolutely can't happen. So he's got some good schemes, and he's got some really good quarterback runs against our man stuff. We're, we're, we're really the quarterback isn't accounted for it. You got to have it accounted by our gap discipline. So he's got some nice, nice schemes in there. He really does. He's doing a great job. Good guy too. Did Levert talk to you at all before he came back? Decided to come back? And did you have discussions with him? And what was your reaction when he decided? Well, I was very happy, but no, we okay. did not have a discussion. Okay. We didn't. We didn't. But we were all very ex excited he was coming back. Sure. Good move for him. Okay. What are you expecting from him in his final season? I think he's just. I think he's going to be lights out. I think he's going to pick up where he left off. I, I really do. Um, I think he sees what his future can be, and he sees what he can do to help this team uh, win a Big Ten championship. So he's he's all in. He's he's all about the team. It's been great. A lot of growth from him in the last two and a half years. Would you say? Oh, Overall. tremendous growth. Yep, big time. Don came in here. I'm sure you read the comments that those last two games, particularly Ohio State, were pretty devastating for him. When you look at that game film, do you sit there and look, how did this team do what they did to you, and, and how do you fix that? Well, it's more like Don. I mean, it, it, it lingered off for me for a while because it's not, and, and I give all the credit in the world to Ohio State, mm -hmm. I, but what we didn't do, what we should have done on things we work on every single day of the week that we didn't do, that we didn't execute, and that's the thing that, that that stuck in my craw is we didn't execute. And if we would execute it, a completion wouldn't have been a touchdown, it would have been a completion tackle. Completion tackle, you know. So those were the very frustrating things for, for me with the execution on those couple of plays that 
turn into big plays for Ohio State. So you felt like your your game plan was equipped. Oh, abs one hundred percent, absolutely equipped, but just didn't execute it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you think they executed? I have no idea. Uh, if I knew that, they would have executed. So <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> a lot of the criticism coming out of that game has had a pretty sizable faction of people calling to go to more zone. But why is man still you know, the way the? Well, the way we that. play our man, we have built-in protection modes, I guess you could say, because of all the rubs and picks. So it's, uh, yeah, zone, zone, it, zone takes care of it right away. But the, in, in, in some of our man schemes, we do have that zone principle involved, some checks involved. So it's all there. It's just execution. What do you see the safeties in the back end? Well, I, I, like I said earlier, I think Brad Hawkins has had a hell of a spring. I think Josh Metellus is taking a leadership role. He's doing a hell of a job uh, covering in the back end, communicating in the back end. I think Jamaric Woods is going to have some some opportunities for some jobs out there. Tough kid. He's, he's getting a real good fill of defense. So those guys have come along really well. Which receivers gave your group the toughest time in the spring? Well, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, they're a little nicked up, but you know, Mikey, Mikey, little Mikey Sandstrom is—he's uh, the guy. He's—he's he's had a hell of a spring. He's fun to watch. He's fun to cover. He's hard to cover, uh, but uh, he's pretty electric. He's a guy who was a cornerback in high school. Yeah, we're, we're still you? trying to steal him, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, being where we are uh, with the receivers, he's—he's uh, he's best there, for sure. Got time for one or two more? If you have it. What makes what makes him so good? Well, f first of all, he, he's very athletic, he's very quick, and he's fast. And when he touches the ball, he's just got this magic. I mean, I'm, I've, I've watched his highlight film from high school, I bet, seven, eight times, and it, it's just fun to watch. You know, defensively, he's a little jerk buggy, he's out there, boom, 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 but then when he gets the ball in his hand, he just goes, and he finds ways to break tackles, he finds ways to, to gain yards and score touchdowns. So he'll be excited for us. Some quarterback way back when. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when way back watch, when. I mean, I would imagine you, you watch the offense. I mean, how, how are these quarterbacks, Shea and Dylan and, and Joe, adapting to this? I, I think pretty good. I really do. I think they all got a pretty good feel for it. You Does know? Shea seem to? Shea's been great. I think he's been a really good leader <laughs> off the field. I think Dylan has been too. I, it, it's an interesting uh, competition. It really is. It's fun. It's fun to watch because, it, you know, as we all know, it brings out the best in all of us. So it, it can only help. It's been good. All right.